Hey, what's up? My name's Russell Allen, and I'm lead singer for a band called Adrenaline Mob. Welcome to Linear Rock, Russell, and welcome back to Italy. Thank you for having me. So from what I heard, Adrenaline Mob seems to be a band of basically friends that happen to be musicians and got together. So yep. what, how, I mean, you had the idea and how this all happened? Um, basically, we we all kind of knew each other. Either uh, you know, me and Portnoy, yeah. uh, the drummer, have known each other for many years. Toured together, and we always talked about doing something. Uh, didn't think it was going to be this, but you know, <laughs> and to the much the surprise of probably a lot of the you know the, the prog fans out there, we we uh, decided to to make this the band we would work in together. But the truth of it is, is that uh, Mike Orlando. Uh, brought uh, some material to me when I was working on my solo, my second solo album with him, and uh, we were taking a break from that because we had been burned out on it. We've been working on it for years uh, and, uh, on the breaks between Symphony X tours, and, yeah. and so he finally brought this material to me. He was trying to get a band together around it, and so I said, "Well, you know, you're helping me with my solo stuff. Let me see what I can do with this." And, and so I, I picked a few numbers that that I felt were pretty pretty strong and. And I helped uh, produce it with him, and I sang the tracks, uh, and we sent it out to uh, some of our, some, of our, some of our friends in the industry, and they loved it. So then the work started. It's like, okay, well, let's continue to go through his graveyard of riffs yeah. and song ideas, and uh, and see what we have here. So we basically started to uh, piece together a record, um, and once we had most of the material there. Uh, we uh, started thinking about who would be great in the band, so I thought of Mike, Mike Portnoy, uh, because he had just recently departed from Avenged Sevenfold. I gave him a call. He wanted me originally to do something else with him, you know. So uh, but I said, I think you should check this out. It's really cool. He goes, nah, I don't know, man. I always just this a thing. I'm like, nah, but you really gotta check out. I think I said something like, you gotta check out what I got cooking. He goes, all right, well, you know, let's let's see what you got cooking. You know? yeah. So I sent him. Undaunted, the demo of Undaunted, and uh, he emailed me back in 30 seconds, big capital letters, I'm in. That was it. <laughs> and so that that was it. So we just sent, started sending more material. He's like, wow, this song's even better, and this song's great, this song's yeah. great. So that's kind of how it started. And then, of course, we we um, we got so much attention early on that the Godsmack guys, you know, Sully and the guys really liked what we were doing, so they offered to take us out. So we rushed to get an EP yeah. out there just to get something out there. Uh, and we got Rich and Paul in the, in the band to tour with us. Um, uh, of course, you know, Rich had his prior, he, before we even had him, he was committed to Fozzie and, and stuff and Chris Jericho. And, and uh, it just worked out that those guys went on and did that, you know, because they already had their commitments to that. Um, and we luckily, you know, got John Moyer from Disturbed. Uh, you know, Disturbed is done on, on a break and he was looking for something to do. Sent him the stuff, had, flew him out for an audition, and you know we went from a five piece to a four piece, and that's how the that's that's the whole uh, what do you say the, the, story, the story of of the La Familia. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, <laughs> the songs are not exactly what the fans expected from the band. It's no. actually different than what you all have done before. Right. There are of course some influences, but uh, it's surprising how different they yeah. are than we expected them to be. Is this simply the result of a pure new chemistry or it was supposed to be different since the beginning? Um, it was supposed to be different from the beginning. Like I said, me and Orlando were working on material that he wanted to have for a like a more of a straightforward rock metal band. Yeah. Um, I've never gotten to do that genre of music. Uh, I love it. I grew up with it, but it's nothing I've ever been able to to try. So I was uh, excited to try it uh, to see how it would go. And this band is a lot of fun. You know, like like uh, it's it's good music. They're really good songs, but they were never meant to be more than just that. There's good playing in the songs, but it's not a technical band by any stretch of the imagination. But there's a, you know, Mike Orlando's a killer shredder, one of the fastest I've ever yeah. seen. Uh, he, uh, he's, he's an incredibly gifted songwriter, um, and so we, from the beginning, were, were, were making music for everyone, you know, like for uh, just good, solid songs with strong choruses and you know, good, honest, heartfelt lyrics 
this is uh, different for me from 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 you know Symphony X, yes. which is more uh, fantastic or like um, uh, fantasy or, or things like this. Or you know, uh, we do a lot of Greek mythology or things that are not real. You know. Um, even the new album, even though it deals with a lot of the, you know, the Iconoclast deals with a lot of technology things, it's still like a Terminator story in a way, some of the songs, you know, Manic vs. Machine. Yeah. But it's, these, this, these lyrics on this record are more personal, you know, for me. Uh, they're more from the heart in terms of directly dealing with my life and dealing with things that I'm feeling, uh, things like that. So this band was a great outlet for me to speak about things that I wanted to, to talk about, you know. Uh, I was um, dealing with a lot right now in my life, uh, you know, in my personal life, and uh, this band was a good outlet for that. So. Is this going to be definitely a band or yeah. simply a project? No, this, yeah. is a band. A band. this is a band. So you're going to go on and make more records? Yeah. yeah. Do you leave this more, more as a fun thing than with Symphony X? I mean, is that the job and this one is like the party? or? Uh, it it kind of... Kind of could appear that way. I still have a lot of fun with Symphony X. We just played in Tel Aviv uh, for the first time. We did play Croatia for the first time. A lot of firsts for Symphony X this summer, doing festivals. I, I you know, those guys are, are, are my my old friends. I mean, I've known them for a long time. And, and uh, but the music is is uh, it's not it's work to make the music with Symphony X. It's so so meticulously crafted okay. uh, you know this is fun music to make because it's more in the moment okay. uh, the songs come together very quickly I think uh, my the most personal song all, all on the line you know was written in one afternoon well, just maybe a few hours music and then and the singing that I sang that day that's what you hear on the record there's no change okay. so this is what I, this is the difference the singing on, on Symphony X is, is a, 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 you know, a lot of times, a lot of working at it, making it, you know. And, and how is it hard for you to have both things together? Because at Sweden Rock, for example, you played with yeah. both bands. I was there, so. <laughs> Is no, it, is it, it, very it was hard? difficult. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was difficult in in the mentally switching. You okay. Know? But but physically or singing wise, I had two really good performances, so that wasn't really a problem. It was the the, the mob show was harder for me because it was so early in, in the day. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh god, I got to get up. You know, at noon. Huh? You know, but actually, because I have two kids now, two little kids, I'm used to getting up really early, so it didn't really bother me. Yeah. But, but it was it was tough. You know, just mentally switching. You know, maybe you know, the lyrics and everything, I'm trying to remember, but... Uh, Mentally and vocally as well. No, vocally it's well, the same. I mean, um, I saw you with both bands. Um, your singing through the years is becoming more and more aggressive, but with this band, I feel that uh, you have a more melodic approach. Uh, yeah. you, you really sing your heart out yes. even more. Yeah. So it's you're setting yourself, uh, I mean, in different moods when it yeah. comes to one band or the other. Yeah, that's that. The music dictates my emotional meter. Yeah. You know, like okay. you know, uh, the the adrenaline mob is more emotional music, so it's more more emotional singing at times, and then. Uh, but it's aggressive too, but it's more like aggressive for real, like I'm mad, you know, like yeah. I, the songs are, I'm angry in some of the songs because the lyrics are angry because I'm pissed off, like hit the wall, I'm, I'm, I'm like ready to fucking, you know, <laughs> hit the wall, you know, like these are real, you know, uh, and it's like, that's like the car, the song you want to drive your car really fast into a, into off a mountain, you know, or something, you know, but Symphony X is different, yes, because it's more technical, or it's more like uh, I have to think in the in the mind frame of the story of yeah. the song. So I'm, a, I'm I don't want to say an actor, but in a way I have to think of in my mind the picture of the story, so I can sing and sing the story, you know, like this. So whereas Adrenaline Mob is pure adrenaline, pure emotion, hard driving music like this. Yeah, definitely different. And for Omerta, your first album, you chose also to pick a cover song, which is very surprising, very particular, bizarre, yes. Yes. Uh, I must say. Yes. Uh, Commandant from Duran Duran. Yeah. Who had the idea and why that song? Uh, Mike Orlando had the idea. Okay. It was his idea to do that cover. He said, I always wanted to cover this song. I thought it was a terrible idea. I will be the first to admit. <laughs> what the fuck? You know, Duran Duran, really, bro? Who the hell's gonna take this band seriously? It's already <laughs> difficult. They have two prog metal, prog guy, giants or whatever, yeah, yeah. and here we're gonna do this. 
but it was perfect because uh, as I started to think about what the song should sound like, you know, from a produ wearing the producer's hat, how how do I approach this? Um, it came to me. I started thinking of Pete Steele, and I started thinking of type of negative or this type of a vibe, and so I layered the vocal with the high vocal, which my normal voice is. Yeah. But I set that one back and did a lower vocal, like what Pete would have done, uh, and and kind of just you know glided the the, melt, the 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 words like this and had more of a swagger to it, you know, right. like uh, and and then it started to sound cool. It just started to sound like something. And when we finished the demos, I was like, man, this is great. This is great. And of course, you know, Portnoy's performance on it is insane, and Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm adds her vocals to it, and it just takes takes the song to to a whole new level. And I think lyrically, the song is great. Again, it, it's a it's a really you know when you come undone, you know when you when you go bye bye, you know. So it kind of fits the whole mob thing, and it was perfect, um, and definitely an odd selection, but one I feel is not a cover. More, it is a remake. If you listen to the two songs. The original and this, yeah. it, I mean, it's completely different, you know. Which is usually the best. Yeah. Um, so, Omerta is an Italian word. Yeah. Uh, why that title? And uh, is there also any particular reason or meaning behind the moniker Adrenaline Mob? Uh, Adrenaline Mob basically sums up uh, two different uh, uh, ideas that Portnoy and, and uh, and Mike had, and then they started mixing them together, and they came up with Adrenaline Mob, and I loved it. I, I, uh, Portnoy wanted the Mafia thing because we were all from the New York area, yeah. and, and it's very popular for us, you know, the, 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 the Italian Mafia in America, uh, the movies, The Godfather, Sopranos, our logos, you know, this type. So, you also uh, use as an outro uh, the, the yeah, Godfather yeah, team on yeah, stage. Yeah, so yeah. It's <laughs> we, 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 we went with that because we really wanted people to understand that this is a real band, you know, this is a gang. You yeah. know? We're the most dangerous band in the world. In other words, we have nothing to lose, you know, We're, we only have each other. Yeah. So everyone else is against us already, you know, because, because of the super group thing and it's always meant to never go anywhere, and yeah. project after project. So. We figured, you know, let's come out with this kick, kick-ass, you know, you know, mob sort of thing. That means basically we're here to fucking kick ass and and take no prisoners, and that's it. We are a rock band, yes. We are a metal band. We're not trying to be anything but that. But we're going to be the hardest hitting, most determined, you know, bunch of guys that are doing it today. No matter how old we are or whatever, that doesn't mean shit to us. We're we have a high energy show, so it's adrenaline. Yeah. You know. And the mob is the La Familia, okay. the, the bond between each other. And Omerta, yeah. Omerta, uh, <laughs> is uh, is obviously you know the code, the code of silence, or the, the the oath you take to be in this brother, this brotherhood, this elite you know group of 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 uh, guys you know that are that are committed for life. You know, so we're in this for life. We're not going to get out. I never want to see this band end. Uh, it may change. Yeah. You know, whatever, but you know, I'll I'll always be in the mob now from here and for and forever. You know, so I'm committed to it, and uh, and I know that people love it because this tour has been amazing. So and today I hope that people get what we're trying to do and understand that we mean business. The mob means business. <laughs> I heard that the record sales are going pretty slow than what you expected them to go. Um, I mean, how do you leave that? Um, oh no, I, I'm not disappointed at all. We, we we debuted at number five of the top rock albums in the United States. It was like Van Halen, and yes. Nickelback, and you know, uh, whatever, whoever, <laughs> and, and Adrenaline, Adrenaline Mob. Mob. You know, so <laughs> okay. so in America, that was our target, and okay. in America, we we did really good for not having our radio campaign in place yet. Right. So now, as we speak. Our radio campaign is actually being put into place. It, everything is being done behind a little bit because yeah. the album got rushed. We had to get our our uh, we didn't have our team hired yet, so there's a lot of things that that were delayed. But uh, you know, here in Europe, the sales are are, are pretty pretty decent. Okay. But um, I think uh, yeah, we, we we weren't expecting to like you know sell a million records you know, right. out of the gate. Nobody sells this anymore. Yeah. So I'm very happy if we can continue to uh, 
to uh, stay, you know, uh, selling on a weekly basis uh, a good amount of, of, of numbers. And they keep going up. So if, if uh, the more work that we do, the more it's going to be better received. But in, a, in the United States, it's very it's a very difficult time right now, you know, for radio for, yeah. for these type of things. And the music business in general is very tough. So our expectations were were not super super high for sales, but uh, we have good expectation for building the fan base. And so that's what I'm happy about. You know, so I mean, more record sales, yes, of course. But uh, you have to get on the radio in the United States to do that, and that's what we're doing now. Um, today, you're sharing the stage with two monumental singers of metal, which are Michael Kiske from Unisonic and, of course, Eric Adams of Manowar. Do you feel any competition about it? Uh, no, because no. they, they, you know what, I can't do what they, I can't do what they do. Uh, and they can't do it. I so it's, I, there's no competition. Singing is a very unique thing. It's a very, uh, uh, yeah, you know, the human voice is, is um, not easily replicated. You know, uh, you, some guys kind of sound like other guys, but you, you know, that's about as far as it goes. It's their soul and the feeling of the person singing. You know, uh, they're they're excellent vocalists with really really high good good range. You know, yeah. I have a four octave range too, but it's it's not that that high. You know. So I'm not trying to compete with them or whatever, <laughs> scream like that, because that's not what I do, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm a soulful, you know, singer, more in the line of Ronnie James Dio, you know. I don't hear them doing Dio. So, you know, I mean, that's more of what I guess I would be comparable to. Or, but I, I don't compete. I, I'm, not, I'm not here to compete with artists. I'm here, I'm here to compete for the attention of the audience. I'm here to knock you out, you know. So that's all I really care about, you know. At Sweden Rock, you play the Mob Rules. Yeah. Are you gonna play that today as well? I, is that a song that is in the set? Yeah, it's, it fits the Mob, you know. So <laughs> it's, it's a perfect, perfect thing. So you know, again, uh, <laughs> I can't see it doing, it, not doing it. You know, we're in Italy. You know, yeah. the Mob is in Italy, so you know, uh, uh, doing the Mob Rules makes perfect sense. Okay. So thanks very much for your time, Russell. Thank and you. Good luck for the show and rock on. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.